this beauty fired up. So press and hold that for about three seconds to get it to come on. No vibration or anything like that when it comes on. The screen quality is brilliant. It's got 16 million colours, 720 by 1280 pixels, and that's a 306 uh, pixel density, which basically means 306 pixels per inch. Um, I'll just get a get past this screen and I'll cut back into it once it's all set up. Actually, why not? I'll show you it. So it's the standard setup um, for any Android phone. It gives you all the setup stuff straight away. You log it onto your onto, onto your Wi-Fi, and uh, you can start signing into everything. So you've got your Samsung account, which is basically just for downloading apps and music and stuff. Nothing you can't already get off Android Market. Uh, let's skip all this. Uh, you've also got your Android uh, login there, which will be with a Gmail account. This phone belongs to. Got Dropbox as well, that gives you 50 gigabytes. Uh, that's free for two years. I'm not sure what it is after that, uh, but that's pretty good for your online backup. And it's ready to go. So, as you can see, quite a nice screen quality. Uh, it's a Super AMOLED screen as well, so the colour density of the, the brightness is going to be really good. Uh, on here. It's just standard what you're used to if you've already had an Android phone uh, set up. You've got your desktop which you can switch between all your windows, get about seven of those I think, yeah seven, and you can personalize these as you like, adding, adding widgets and your shortcuts on. Now usually all these widgets are quite power hungry with Galaxies um, because there are lots of little things going all on at once, but with a quad-core processor you're absolutely fine. It's a quad-core processor, it's 1.4 gigahertz and it's a Cortex A9 chip so it's nice and smooth no matter what you're doing. And because of that Samsung will be able to put some pretty interesting features in with it. Uh, one of which, which is my favourite, if you go into your main menu and uh, go onto a video and you, you're playing your video, which by the way is lovely quality, both landscape and portrait. what you can do is you can press this little button down here if you get a text message or something like that and it resizes the video and you can move that around the screen as much as you like uh, and you can carry on doing whatever it is you need to do at the same time so you can send your text you can have a look on Facebook or whatever and this is probably quite a processor heavy thing to do but it's obviously running it no problem at all there's no clipping at all when I'm moving it around it's really good you can double tap to go straight back into the full size video or you can even hold it down and this little minus appears on the video press that and it's gone no lagging at all going on there one thing I do quite like about Samsung's version of um, of ice cream sandwich uh, which is running 4.0.4 on this as standard uh, compared to HTC's version is that they haven't taken away all the quick shortcuts at the top here of the notifications bar so let me just refocus so you can see this properly uh, refocusing done so you can see this properly so at the top here you've still got your quick shortcuts to all the things you want they've actually added um, a few in here as well. So you've got your Wi-Fi and GPS there. Screen rotation is on. You can switch it off to lock it. Power saving mode, so it will dim the screen a little bit. Just imagine it probably switches off 3G apart from when you actually tell it to use it. Notifications on and off, which would be quite useful if you're in a meeting or anything like that and you don't want it all going off. Mobile data network, switch on and off Bluetooth driving mode to make all the icons nice and big. On the HTC, you have to go into this little cog just here to activate that, uh, which is a bit long winded really. Also on the HTC's you don't have this anymore where you can just bring up the options here um, which is a bit irritating really, I don't see why they've made it so long winded on the HTC's. So other features that the phone has got, you've got near field communication on there uh, which uh, works automatically with Samsung's 
and you can use that near field communication with any uh, near field communication activated handset or enabled handset rather um, so say if you've got a friend with an Android handset or another Galaxy you can bring up the app for near field communication uh, you can both pop your phones together and then you can transfer files nice and easily obviously you can use it to pay for stuff as well if you wanted to and you don't need to get one of those stupid little stickers to go on the back of your phone from Barclays um, what else have we got here uh, now as far as the browser is concerned with the phone uh, it runs HTML and Adobe Flash so you can pretty much look at anything and you're not restricted like on the iPhone as far as video is concerned let's have a quick look at how it runs so if we go on to, oh, it's pretty quick, considering I'm on a really rubbish Wi-Fi as well. Uh, let's have a look at what the keyboard's like. Pretty good quality. It's just standard, um, your standard um, keyboard with any Samsung. And uh, wow, that actually loads out much quicker than anything else on this Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. Uh, no clipping as well, which is quite nice. Portrait, we still look good. Let's have a look at the portrait keyboard as well. Nice and big, you're not going to have any problem seeing that. We're using it. So that's quite good. You also have multitasking on this one. So you can, for instance, let's open up a few different things. Fantastic. So with Ice Cream Sandwich, multitasking is nice and easy. All you have to do is press and hold your home key down for a couple of seconds. And then you have on screen uh, just everything that's already open on the phone to scroll between. You just click on it and it will go straight back into it. It's got no problem with doing it. They've ported over the S Memo, which um, is originally on the Galaxy Note. So you can create all sorts of different things on this. Quite nice quality. If you get stylus, obviously it's going to work much better. Uh, there's a few interesting features as well that um, Samsung have put on here. I'll just activate them in the settings. So if we go into settings, go down to motion, you can switch on mot motion activation, and then you've got all sorts of different features you can start with. So in the motivation, uh, motion screen, you can do a few things basically. You can train it different um, gesture based things you want to do. So you can do shake to update, um, so you don't have to pull down on the screen on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can direct calls and all that sort of stuff. And you can t teach it whichever gesture you want for that. You also have uh, palm swipe and palm to touch to mute. Um, so, say if I wanted to take a screen dump, all I'd have to do is go like this, and there you go, one screen dump. And then all you do is pull down your notification bar, click on that there, and then notification, and there you go, there's your screen dump, and that will just save to your SD card as normal. So if I demonstrate to you the palm to mute, so if we're playing a video, all you do is put that on. Go like that, and it stops it, and it mutes it, and everything's all good. We've got a few other interesting features on here as well, uh, as far as in the settings are concerned. So again, if we go to display, we can switch on Smart Stay. It's quite a cool little feature, as it says here. When you're looking at the phone, it can detect it using the camera, the 1.9 megapixel camera on the front there. Um, and it won't dim the screen basically, uh, which is quite cool. Let's have a look at the camera. Like I said earlier, it's 8 megapixel camera. It does 1080p video as well at 3, 30, 30 frames per second. Uh, and as you can see, it's really good quality on the screen. I will upload some videos and pictures from the camera itself at the end of the video so you can see properly. But well, I'll show you a few of the features just looking at this white desk here, which is a bit boring. In fact, what I'll do is I will pop down my phone here so there's something decent to look at. Um, so there 
there we go. You can see it's really good quality. So it's nice and simple. You've got the old HTC One uh, X feature on here of being able to record a video and simultaneously press that button there to take a picture. It just dumps it down there, as you can see. Let's put it in there. Um, video settings-wise, some interesting features. So one that I think is really useful is you can go into uh, video quality. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. You can go into recording mode, and you can switch the limit for MMS. Uh, so you're not going to swallow up too much data if you're making a video for someone to send to them, which is quite cool. You can switch on the flash so it's permanently on. Unless you miss the button like I just did. And when you start taking the video, it will do that. You've got your back facing camera as well. There's me, not very good because I've got a light right behind me. But it works quite well. 1.9 megapixel camera is nothing special, but at least it's there. Um, let's switch back to camera. So it is a little bit more zoomed out when you're on the actual camera itself, but that's the same with most digital cameras. Uh, you can change the focus mode from autofocus, macro and face detection. The macro is nothing special really, it's just a digital macro. I've taken a picture of a few things as well, which I'll show you at the end of the video. In your shooting mode, you've got single shot, burst shot, which will take 15 shots. HDR, very similar to the iPhone, it will take three or four pictures at the same time and put them together um, to create the best exposure that you can get. Smile shot, quite an interesting little feature. So, if you're taking a photo of a group of people, when it senses that they're all smiling, it takes the picture, nice and simple. Panorama, really nice, easy to use, sweet panorama. Um, there's no fanning around trying to line the pictures up, it does it all for you. Cartoon mode, share shot, not completely sure that is, I'm probably saying that it probably takes a smaller size picture for uploading to social network sites as well. You can go into the settings of the camera and you can change the exposure, the white balance, and everything like that as usual. Um, and it's quite good, yeah. So the zoom as well, pinch to zoom. Really easy, simple. They haven't made it so that it's digitally zoomed in too much so that you get too much pixelation. It's not the best, but it's all right. You obviously get much better out of an SLR. Um, and that's the camera. I don't know really whether or not that's any other features left to show you. I quite like it myself. Um, if I wasn't an iPhone user already, I would probably get one. Um, and if the iPhone 5 isn't going to be anything decent, which we'll find out in October, then I'll probably consider getting this because it's good, it's powerful, it's fast, it's brilliant screen quality, brilliant camera quality. And uh, yeah, I'd say 9 out of 10. Not bad at all. Thanks very much for watching. Stick around to have a look at the uh, sample pictures and videos that I've taken and uh, thanks for watching.